What's up YouTube, this is Fate, bringing you another deck profile, and today we've got a Yane Zane build for you guys. A build that has plenty of defense, plenty of annoyance, and tons of promise uh, with the upcoming sets. Before I get started with this deck profile, I wanted to give a major shout out to my friend KSI Enemy. If you uh, re recall an earlier uh, deck profile at the locals, uh, most of this stuff actually came from him. Granted, he's been MIA from his channel a little bit, but he's still got tons of content around. I'll leave uh, his channel in the description below, worth uh, checking out. But without further ado, let's get to the deck profile. First off, we start out with Triple Swanee, Triple Bean, and just to give you fair warning, this is more of a more of a Mass Monster Pure profile, so I run Triple Bixie and uh, Double Palau. The Bixie might go down to two, and Bix and Palau will go down to one, uh, but like I said, newer stuff is not out yet, so having the more recurrence to facilitate uh, a heavy part of the defense plays has definitely helped this build a lot for in the long run so far. Then next we've got the Tuner lineup. Three uh, Chewin, Light of the Yang Zing. Really good for bouncing itself back out of the graveyards to uh, help uh, with some surprise synchro plays. And Double Juntel, uh, Darkness of the Yang Zing. And this guy right now, I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't take it for granted that I only have two on the table. I am looking for a third one. This build definitely needs a third one. He is your speed master. I think I'll, for the sake of the deck uh, list uh, in the description below, I'm going to take out one plow, put this guy at three. He is needed at three. One Tauti, uh, Shadow of the Yang Zing. Now, Honestly, with even when the newer stuff comes out, I'm still going to run this guy as a one of, mainly because uh, of that uh, new level nine uh, generic. For all I've seen is uh, one Juntao uses effect, especially on Big C and uh, your level five guy there. Instant lockdown for Necros, and they can't take control of your monster. So that's the whole reason why I still have him here as a one of. And I plan to keep them in there for as long as possible. And for the two support monsters, Double Mass Chameleons. These will be going out as soon as the new stuff comes out. But for now, these guys are fantastic uh, for the current build. Every single thing in here is either zero attack or zero defense. So Mass Chameleon can pretty much fish out anything and help with those synchro plays. That's it for the monster lineup. On to the spells. We've got triple Yang Zane Path. Or triple Pot of Errors, so why not? And we also have triple Supply Squad. I've seen people cut this card out of builds entirely. And I have a support argument that says do not do it. Even though uh, this doesn't help as much sometimes, especially against banished targets, uh, Trishula, I'm looking at you uh, out of the Necros deck. This Supply Squad helps even bait MSTs, force your opponent to use these uh, them against the Supply Squad so you don't get those pluses. It keeps uh, your other defenses and your other speed plays safe from all of those types of destruction. So having triple Supply Squad either helps you or it helps you. For the other support spells, we run double MST, double forbidden challenge, uh, effect negation, and it doesn't hurt your guys too much for a quick power increase. Double dark hole because your guys benefit from being destroyed by effects anyway, so might as well have double the fun with that one. Double creature swap, pretty much the same reason. You don't care if your guy. You put the low attack monster, pretty much swap for whatever your opponent has, and have fun with the plays after that. One soul charge, lots of fun the speed and special summon plays. And one snatch steal, because who doesn't like stealing your opponent's monsters for your own benefits? 
That is it for the spells. On to the traps. For this version of the build, we run triple Yane's in creation. I will be taking these out uh, once uh, the new Yanzing Pendulum Monsters come out. But for the current build, these are still fantastic. Like I said earlier about the Supply Squad's uh, Baiting Away MSTs. This is uh, possibly uh, the card you want uh, them to bait away from the most. Especially when Yanzing Creation gives you double the special zones when your guys die. Next, I won one Yang Zing Brutality. Because attack power, if uh, you uh, set up the field second, attack power does become a, a little bit of a problem with this build. Yang Zing Brutality is able to get yourself out of a couple of those pinches. Granted, it does blow up your monster uh, at the end, but it, it helps facilitate those special summon plays for next turn, and you get rid of a big threat off the field. And to round out the traps, one Torrential Tribute, same reason as Dark Hole. That is it for the main deck, on to the extra deck. We run one Herald of Arc Light. Now I'm going to be seeing this right now, especially with the newer version of Yang Scenes coming out. Once they come out, I will be bumping this guy up to two. It is a very fun control play with uh, the Yane Saints, especially when you get both this established along with your uh, Baxias for a late game. For the level 5s, we've got TG Hyper Librarian. Why not add more draws? And one the Ally of Justice Cataster. I did uh, have a little bit of a yin yang testing battle between both Armadies and Cataster. I think it's just because of the different builds I play off my locals, but I actually end up getting more use out of Catastrophe than Armadies. However, for depending on the, what the playstyle is around uh, your locals, uh, where it's more back row heavy, then I would suggest Armadies over Catastrophe, but so far Catastrophe has worked well for me. For the level 6s, Goyo Garden because he's Goyo. And Vulcan the Divine because he bounces uh, problem cards that you don't want on the field anymore. For the level 7s, we've got Nuke the Field. And we've got two Yazi Evil of the Yane Zin. Awesome card, just as a generic 7 in any deck, but especially powerful in Yane Zins. Recommend at least two of them. For the level 8s, I run Double Baxia, your main bouncer of the build to help disrupt opponent's plays, and uh, your main lockdown piece when comboed with Herald of Arc Light to shut down uh, other specific builds that could be troublesome. And then for the other level 8s, we've got one Stardust Dragon, one Thought Ruler Archfiend, and because Gentile is a dark tuner, why not run BLs with added effects of boost ups that make this guy even more indestructible? For the lone level 9 until the new guy comes out, I run one Mistworm. Mistworm has been undervalued this format, and uh, arguably so because there isn't as much of a back row threat. But for those matchups, which I do still face uh, over where I'm at, Having this guy clear the path and then gain the other bonuses you that you need from your other Yanzing monsters. He has helped uh, clear ways for OTK plays on his own. And then to round out the extra deck we have one Leo, Keeper of the Sacred Tree. He is a tank on his own so why not add more abilities to this guy to make this guy unstoppable. And with that, that is my Yanzing deck profile. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And until next time.